Well, hi everybody. In this tutorial, we are going to take a look at the latest features in Lightroom Classic as of February, 2020. This week, Adobe just released some new features uh, in their uh, February update to Lightroom. It is now Lightroom 9.2. Make sure you open up your Adobe Creative Cloud update or you'll see there's a small update for Photoshop as well. Uh, if you're using the cloud-based version of Lightroom, there's an update there. And of course, Lightroom Classic, if you hover over this, you'll see version 9.2 is the one that we are on now. Okay. When you first launch Lightroom, you're going to see a window that looks similar to this and it lists out all the new features. So let's just start at the top and work our way through. The first one's probably the biggest one. You're going to find it up here in your Lightroom preferences. So it'd be Lightroom menu on a Mac, edit menu on a PC. And there's a tab second from the left. It's called presets. And what we can now do is we can set presets, default settings, I should say, for specific photos or for all of our photos or even for specific cameras and camera models. This has been available for a while. It's just, it's been hidden. You really needed to know the secret handshake and it wasn't quite as, as robust as what we have here. But just to give you a quick overview of it. So here's your raw defaults. These are the default settings. Adobe default is simply all, all sliders are zeroed out with just a touch of sharpening and noise reduction done. And it's using the Adobe color profile. Okay, you can see the profile right over here. It says Adobe Color. That is the default one, okay? You can change this to camera settings. Camera settings uses, if you have got a creative profile set inside of your camera, um, it won't pick up any micro adjustments that you've done, but if you've got a creative profile, like my Sony has one called Landscapes, our landscape, it will pick that profile up and now your profile will automatically say whatever, you know, whatever profile you were shooting in. Okay. Incidentally, every photo needs a profile. Always has, always does, always will. Um, it's just been hidden from you. You haven't, you know, before about a year ago, you didn't really see it quite as much, but there's no way to, to make it not have a profile. So the Adobe color profile has just been the default. And then from there, you can make a preset. So you can go into your develop module, you can set your settings to whatever you want, and you can make a, a develop module preset and then you'll be able to select that preset from the list inside of here. So that'll get applied to all of your photos. And then from there, if you wanna make your default specific to a camera model, I can say, hey, for my Sony a7R4, uh, I want you to do a certain thing to it. And then I could say for, you know, for and a good example is like my Sony a9. If I'm shooting the a9, I'm shooting wildlife. So my preset for the A9 would be a little bit different, probably, you know, a little bit more of a bump in the noise reduction and the sharpening than I typically would for the A7R4 or something that we're shooting landscapes for. Okay. And then you can go through here. Of course, you get your same settings based on that camera and the serial number. Okay. So that is, uh, that's probably one of the biggest changes. Again, it's one of those things it has been around for a long time. It's just been so hidden that a lot of people didn't even know that you could do this. Uh, now we just get you, it, you, you, it makes it a lot more approachable. And also you can always come back and you can see what you did. And that's the biggest thing that I think was missing before is if I set a preset, a default a year ago, you kind of forgot what the default was. So you can at least come in here and always see what that is. The next one, think of this more of a public service announcement. If you are logged in, come up in the top left corner, as long as you're using the subscription version, you're logged in and you've turned syncing on, check out the sync FAQs. It's, they just put this little link inside of here in this latest version. I'm telling you, I get so many questions on this stuff. Um, if you are working with Lightroom Classic, you still have the ability to create a collection and sync that collection with the mobile or the tablet. This has nothing to do with the cloud version, has nothing to do with you storing your photos up in the cloud or do we trying to own your photos or anything like that. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the fact that I go on a shoot, I make a collection, I share it to my phone and tablet. That way I don't have to email myself or Dropbox myself photos. I can be out to dinner with friends and just pull them up on the app on my phone or tablet and I can look at them and share them right from there. Okay, so make sure you read through this. There's a lot of good information in here about what's happening. It's a very new workflow and I, I, I see a lot of questions on it. So lots of good information inside of there. Okay, moving on to a very quick word from our sponsor, which as you guys always know is me. Um, I, have a, uh, I have a course out called the Lightroom System. Uh, it's not a new course, but I just, I just freshly redid it in January of 2024, the latest version of Lightroom. 
Uh, it covers all the workflow, all the settings, everything. Think of it as your encyclopedia for Lightroom. Uh, plus, it talks a little bit about the cloud stuff, cloud interoperability between all the different versions in Lightroom and uh, what you should be using and what you should not and uh, the whole workflow around that as well as catalogs and printing and all that fun stuff. And, uh, and if you're into Photoshop, I have one called the Photoshop system. So I'll make sure I put links to those uh, in the description down there. But same thing, I just redid this in 2020. So uh, freshly updated for the latest versions of Lightroom and Photoshop. All righty, let's move on down our list. The next one is gonna be one of those things that if you need it, it is, it is gonna be one of the biggest changes you've seen in years. If you don't need it, it's, you know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna find a reason for it. And that is, PSB file support, not PSD as in dog, PSB as in boy. So here's the deal. Lightroom, Lightroom will allow your files to get really big. When you, when you start photo merging panoramas and HDR panoramas here, um, when you start taking your large megapixel cameras and start bringing those photos into Photoshop and adding layers upon them, what happens is the documents get really big. Well, Lightroom's got a limit on PSD for two gigabytes. Uh, TIFF is four gigabytes. So if your document's bigger than that, you can't bring it into Lightroom or bring it back into Lightroom. So if you're working on a large panorama, which you really could be, if you've got one of those 60 megapixel cameras and depending on how many photos you've shot across and layers you might've added in Photoshop, you, may, you have not been able to bring that document and continue to work on it and print it and do all those fun things from Lightroom. So now you can, it has PSB file support, which is the large document file that you would need to save that in. And, uh, and now you can bring those into Lightroom and continue to work on them. So like I said, for people that need that workflow, this one is huge because you literally have not been able to bring those photos in here. Next up on our list are two areas of GPU performance upgrades. Uh, one of them is for lens corrections and transform. So when you're doing anything in lens corrections or anything in that transform panel, uh, you will now benefit from GPU acceleration. The other one's going to be on a certain Mac OS only, but if you're doing anything with enhanced details, all right, enhanced details is a feature that came out in 2019, mainly for Fuji shooters, mainly for people that are printing really big. Um, not a feature I recommend most people use, but if you are using enhanced details, there is a GPU performance boost in there. While we're on the topic of GPU, I'm going to go to my Lightroom preferences and go over to performance. If you haven't been in here yet, I'm going to link you to a video that is called uh, my, my five or speed tips for tips for speeding up Lightroom. But I talk about things inside of this dialog box. Uh, in February 2020, if Lightroom is still slow for you, something's wrong. Because as long as your computer, keep in mind, if your computer is at the minimum specs, for Lightroom, okay? You're gonna get minimum performance. But if you've got a good beefy computer, check out that video because there's a lot of things, I got a lot of great feedback on it from, from speeding things up for people. And then also look at your graphics processor, look at, learn more, see if it's supported, do you have the right options turned on, more performance tips. Again, you'll learn a lot of really important things from this that could be one of the things that's holding Lightroom back for you. So uh, hopefully make sure you check that stuff out and I bet you there's something in there that will, will help out if you're still having a lot of problems, okay? All right, that takes care of our GPU performance. Next up we have secondary displays. Again, I'm gonna go back to preferences. Uh, this is for people, I don't have a secondary display connected here, but if you open up your preferences and go to displays, you would see another one over here, very similar to what you may see in your operating system preferences. And it will allow you to choose a monitor for your secondary window, um, position those, et cetera, et cetera. We've always had support for secondary displays, but it was a little bit more limited. So now you've got a few more options inside of here. And the last one, super simple one. It's really just a, a minor interface tweak. Uh, we've been able to sync photos for a long time. I click on one photo, I shift click on another one, and I can click this sync button down here. It's been around forever. Well, there's a little toggle switch on that that goes to auto sync, which means now when I make a change on one photo, all the photos I had selected in the film strip will get changed. So if I make that change back the other way, again, they all get changed here. So the only tweak is, is that it's just a bright button because I guess a lot of people, and I've seen a lot of people didn't know it was turned on and a whole bunch of things were changing and they didn't want them to. So now it is a bright button. And of course, there's a preference in your interface preferences where you can make it not to be bright if you don't want to. 
Well, that wraps up Lightroom Classic. Uh, the only other change of note in the Lightroom ecosystem is if you are an iPad user, uh, now the iPad version of Lightroom now supports the split screen view. So that can be useful if you wanna have Lightroom open and another screen open on your iPad. It will now support it. Folks, thanks so much for swinging by. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you go grab your update and I will talk to you again real soon.